The first sorting algorithm that we want to look at is the bubble sort. Now, bubble sort is not a particularly good sort, uh, but it's simple. It's simple to think about and it's simple to write. And for that reason, it's something that people often start off looking at. So imagine that we have an array of numbers like this one. And the idea of bubble sort is we want to run through the array and we compare consecutive elements. And if they are out of order, we swap them. And so we start off, we compare the 4 and the 7. 4 comes before 7, so we're happy with this. And we go on to the next pair. We compare the 7 to the 2. The 2 should come before the 7, and that means we need to do a swap. Well, how do we do a swap? Well, we're going to take one of these values, and we're going to move it over to another memory location. It would be a temporary memory location. We take the other one, and we scooch it into the place where the 7 had been, and then we finish off by putting the 7 back here. And that is our swap operation. After that's done, we compare the 7 to the 9. 7 comes before 9, so it stays there. We compare the 9 to the 3. 9 comes after 3, so we're going to do another swap. The 9 goes out, the 3 goes over, and the 9 goes up. We compare the 9 to the 8. Well, nope. 9's bigger there too. So the 9 comes out, the 8 moves over, and then the 9 moves back up. 9 comes after 1 as well. So the 9 moves back down here, the 1 moves over, and the 9 moves up. 9 also comes after the 5, so once again, the 9 goes to our temporary variable, the 5 moves over, and the 9 moves up. That was a single pass through the array. We would do this multiple times, and we should talk more about how many times we need to do it. <clears throat> also, some things to note about this. So, it rearranged things a little bit. At the end of one pass, the largest element is definitely at the end, because no matter where the largest element started, it's going to wind up being pushed all the way to the end when we're done. That means that on subsequent passes, I don't need to consider this element. Okay, so after one pass, I can basically exclude the last one. After two passes, the next biggest one will be here. After three passes, the next biggest one will be here. We can illustrate this. We'll go through another pass. So we compare the four and the two. They're out of order. So the four moves down, the two moves over, and the four moves back up. Four and seven are in the correct order. 7 and 3 are not. So the 7 moves down, the 3 moves over, and the 7 moves back up. The 7 and the 8 are in the correct order, so we're happy there. The 8 and the 1 are not. So the 8 moves down, the 1 moves over, and the 8 moves back up. And 8 and 5 are in the wrong order, so the 8 moves back down. The 5 moves over, and the 8 moves up. We've now done two passes through the array. The 8 and the 9 are the two largest elements, and they are in place, and therefore we can ignore them. And we could continue doing this to get a sorted order. When I have students do this, I typically do not have them write things out like this. What they would do instead would be to just start with the elements, as we had to start with. And then below those, I would ask them to write the result of doing one pass through the array. So after one pass through the array, the four didn't move, the two swapped forward, the seven stopped on the nine, three, eight, one, five, nine. Then we would do another pass, which would give us the array as it's seen here. 2, 4, 3, 7, 1, 5, 8, 9. As I said, you might even mark these elements at the end here as being kind of in order so we don't deal with them. Next pass. The 2 stays before the 4. The 3 swaps ahead of the 4. The 4 stays before the 7. The 1 swaps in front of the 7. 
the 5, swaps in front of the 7, and we have our three largest elements at the end. Next pass. 2 stays where it is, 3 stays where it is, 1 swaps in front of the 4, 5 stays where it is, and we now have 4 largest elements at the end. 2 stays, 1 swaps with the 3, the 4 is where it's supposed to be. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. Now, in this case, I have stopped at this point, but as a general rule, turns out that you need to go, so I have gone n minus two times. I had eight values here, and I went through one, two, three, four, five, six iterations. As a general rule, we would actually need to go through seven. And that is because if this one had been in the last spot, it would actually take seven iterations to push it all the way to the front. So this is how we might trace through bubble sort, kind of shows you what it's actually doing, and we can see what the values actually look like. How do we write code for the bubble sort? Now, it turns out that one of the reasons why people like to use bubble sort is because it's fairly easy to code. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and create a file called sorts.scala and let's make a bubble sort. As I said before, we are sorting arrays and because it's really easy to generate random doubles, I'm going to sort an array of doubles. The sort gives us back unit. Because the sort is happening in place, it is modifying the array. It is not going to give us back a new array in its place. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we said that we were going to have to repeat, so we have to run through the array, and we have to do that n minus one times. So I'm going to have a for loop where I'll create an index called a value called i, and i is just going to have to go from zero until a dot length minus one. So that is a loop that happens length minus one times. Inside of here, I'm going to have another for loop. And this for loop is going to go from zero until a dot length minus one minus i. And the reason for that minus i is once again, remember, we have already pushed the largest elements to the end. So I can, the first time when i is zero, well, I have to go all the way to length minus one. The second time, I've already pushed the largest element to the end, so I can subtract another one and I don't have to look at that. The third time I can subtract two, etc. And what needs to happen inside of here? Well, inside of this, we need to check are these is the element out of order with the one after it. So I'm going to say if a sub j is greater than a sub j plus one, I will note that I have switched to not using colored fonts here uh, in VI because I've had some people note that some of the colors are hard to read. So while I do like syntax highlight highlighting and I highly encourage you to have syntax highlighting, I think for the purposes of the subsequent videos, I'm going to stay with just white on black so that it's easier for everyone to read. So if a sub j is greater than a sub j plus one, that means that these things are out of order. The element in front is bigger than the element behind it. So what do we need to do? We need to swap them. As I was doing with the pictures, I'm going to create a temporary variable and I'm going to set that equal to a sub j. That was, that's equivalent to when I took that one element and drug it down into my temporary value. Then I can overwrite a sub j with the value at a sub j plus one. And then I can finish off by storing at a sub j plus one that temporary value. And that's it. That is a bubble sort. 
The reason why people like bubble sort is because it's very easy to work with. Uh, it'd be nice to see if this actually works. Let's go ahead and let's bring up a REPL and let's load in our file. See how many typos I have. Eh, that seemed to work. Val ARR equals array.fill. Let's give ourselves uh, 10 values math.random. So that'll give me 10 random numbers. Clearly these are not in sorted order right now. And I can call bubble sort on ARR. It finished. That's happy. And then we can look at ARR again. 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 15109, 15142337475761666. 6, Indeed, these values are all sorted. So that's the bubble sort. The reason that people like it is because it's actually remarkably simple to write. It's almost hard to mess up. Uh, and the, the logic is very simple and straightforward. It just does a bit more work than, than what some other better sorts would do. We'll come back and we'll look at some other sorts in the future videos.